you guys hear me? No. All right. Welcome to First Baptist Church of Gray Summit. If you're new here, we would love to connect with you. If you can text hi to 636-742-1011. Um, that just gives us an opportunity to connect with you, or you can fill out the visitor card in your pew if you're more comfortable with that. Online people, if you want to like or comment on the live stream, um, that lets us know that you're watching. That would be wonderful. So a few announcements. Tonight we have Winter Jam at the St. Charles Family Arena. If you are interested in going, um, anyone of all ages, um, please see Julie for details. On Wednesday, March 16th, is our backpack mission, and that is at 9.30 a.m. We would love to have you there. And then also on March 16th, we have choir practice at 5.30. Friday, March 18th, we have volleyball in the gym at 6.30 for all ages. And Sunday, March 20th, is a game night in the gymnasium at 4 o'clock for also all ages, anyone who's interested. Sunday, March 27th, we have a small luncheon after church to brainstorm about the Children in Action program here at First Baptist. And um, finally, we have a sign-up sheet for the Health Day at Lifeline Pregnancy Care Center in the foyer. Um, you can reach out to me for more details if you need any details. Um, we will have a small meeting following church next Sunday. So next Sunday, if you want to go to that meeting, um, just hang out after church and we will meet. Um, but the health day is on April 9th at 9 a.m. Thank you. Thanks, Christina. So lots of stuff going on, as you just heard. Next Sunday, if you want to stick around with Christina, she's going to have a little... Uh, touch base about that that help day and then the next Sunday and that and then game day is that day and then the next Sunday there's a luncheon right after to talk about children in action okay it's a it's a program in in concert with women's missionary union and so we're gonna have a little luncheon after church the 27th to do that little note that uh, Lori gave me about uh, game night that I just want to pass to you the guys that are big and strong, all right, that are coming to game night, if you guys would come a little early, we got plenty of tables to set up and, and kind of move around. And so uh, we're, we're asking for some guys. Uh, I can do most of it, but um, we need a couple more that can do that. Um, so move around some chairs to get ready. I believe there's a sign-up sheet also for game night. Uh, so you can sign up there and uh, let us know what you're doing. I'm, we're going to bring some board games. I'm a board game fanatic, and so we're going to bring all that stuff. We're going to have a lot of fun. Let's pray, and then um, and then Barb is going to do our prelude. That would be a great time. Lots of stuff going on. Who lost an hour of sleep today? Everybody did, right? And so, uh, but here's a good time to still our hearts. There's always some kind of like, for me, I don't know if I'm the only one, I have like this anxiety that happens when a daylight savings time. I don't know why, and so uh, it's just kind of awful. I want to get rid of it, but anyway, so I'm going to pray. We're going to have a prelude. Still your heart before the Lord, and let's sing some songs to him. Father, we thank you so much for who you are, that you are not the God of yesterday, but you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Your presence is already here in this room with us as we meet to worship you. And Father, we just pray that our songs of praise would go to an audience of one and glorify you. We pray, Lord, that uh, as we hear the word of God preached, that you would still our hearts, prepare our hearts to hear what you have to say for us and act in obedience to it, Lord. This is the day that you have made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Help us to take full advantage of our freedom here in this country to worship you as we ought to. Father, we thank you for, for what you do in our country, Lord. We pray for those that are struggling economically uh, in, in the world and abroad, uh, right here at home. Father, struggling against gas prices and inflation at record levels. Uh, Father, we pray for Ukrainian refugees that are, that are spilling out over Europe your, your even now. Father, we pray for them and intercede for them. Father, I, I pray for the Rus Russian citizens whose ruble is, is crashing for a war that they didn't ask for. And so, Father, I pray for them too as they're struggling uh, 
in the midst of something that they, they didn't even see themselves in. And so, Father, we pray that you would bring peace, you would bring order. And, Father, you would help us right now as we consecrate this hour for your glory, that you would work in us, that you would speak to us, Father, that we could be your hands and feet, and, and we can be agents of reconciliation to a lost world. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hey, I'd invite you guys to stand with us. I want to teach you a new song today, okay? Maybe Daylight Savings Time was not the day to do this. Let's find out, right? This is called House of the Lord. We believe that there is joy when we gather together, that God's presence is with us as we worship together. And so I want to teach you this song, House of the Lord. We want you to be energized. I know you lost an hour of sleep, but let's put a smile on. Let's worship the Lord with gladness and song as we sing this together. Let's sing together. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. Sing. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he Holds the victory. Let's sing. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. All right, y'all got it? We shout out. Oh. 
That's where our hope is found, it's found in Christ alone. He's our hope, our song. He's the reason we gather today amid all of the chaos of the world and frustration around us. Christ is our sure and only hope. So let's sing to him. Christ alone. close to our time of invitation. Uh, I'd ask you if you're visiting with us, just thank you for being our guest today. If you're online, uh, we have the tithely module that Sasara and I give personally and do all of our business there. And if you're here today and uh, the Lord compels you to give, we're thankful for that. That's how we do what we do. And if you're a, a member here as well, we're thankful for you to be here and to worship with us. Mike, you gonna pray for us today? Appreciate sure. you, brother. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do want to thank you for all your blessings you brought us, us for eternal salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, we just ask you take this offering and you see it through our according to your will, Lord. And we pray, pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Yes, ma'am. We have a special day today. Is it your birthday? It's your anniversary. <laughs> oh, wow. Not bad, not bad. Thank you. Security team. <laughs> Can y'all hear me? Y'all, I'm almost there. Check, one. I want to talk loud. Hey, children are dismissed to Children's Church. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. <clears throat> 13 years of marriage. On uh, Friday the 13th, we were married. It's a good time. Good stuff. This is kind of an, well, I'll wait till they go. <laughs> They're awesome. They're just incredible, aren't they? <clears throat> love them, love them. It's kind of a weird admission today, but one of my favorite Disney movies growing up was Alice in Wonderland. Is there anybody else who's an Alice in Wonderland fan? Is that a girl movie? Am I not allowed to do that? Is it 2022? Am I allowed to like Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> but <laughs> one of my favorites was Alice in Wonderland, and I don't know if I don't remember if it was in the movie, but it was in the book. There's a part where Alice. She's wandering through uh, the Wonderland, you know, and she doesn't know where she's going. And she comes to this fork in the road, and she doesn't know which way to go. And it's at that point that the Cheshire cat shows up, right? That kind of magical, weird cat that shows up. And uh, she asks the cat, which way on this road should I go? And the cat replies, well, where are you going? And Alice, trapped in the Wonderland, says, I don't really know. And the Cheshire cat replies, then it doesn't matter which way you go. It, it doesn't matter which way on the fork of the road you go, because you don't know where you're going anyway. If you have no clear idea of where you're going, you're, any movement is just wandering. Any movement is just further, just movement for movement's sake. You know, some people have no idea where they're going in life, and they would admit as much. They, they would say, I, I don't know where I'm going, but that doesn't stop them from continuing to wander around like Alice in Wonderland. Some people are dead set on what they want in life and adamant about it, but in reality, they're just as lost as Alice is because the way in life is not ours to decide. The, the roadmap of life is not given unto us. It's not innate in us. It's given to us by God. We would love to say to ourselves, I'm the captain of my own ship, but we really aren't. It's God Almighty who sets the course of our life. He's the only authority by which we can navigate life. And if you fail to listen to your authority, if you fail to listen to your boss or your commanding officer or your parents, it usually doesn't end well. A mobster one time, he was talking to his unruly lieutenants, and he says, I can't be having you monkeys getting out of line. You guys might be clever monkeys, but you're still monkeys, and I'm the zookeeper. And it's a question of who is in charge in your life. Who is the zookeeper of your life? I wonder if you feel aimless today, wandering today. Sometimes we feel like we are just existing with no real direction. We're just here, but we don't really know where we're going or why we're going or how we're going. And I've even had friends of mine that have come to me, friends on the outside that seem so confident in all of their plans and schemes in their life. And they've admitted to me that sometimes they just feel like a rat trapped in the maze. I wonder if that's some of us today in our everyday life. I, I just don't know where I'm going but I, but I know that I'm just still wandering and still walking. Sure, we, we make ourselves busy, don't we? We pride ourselves on our busyness and the stuff we fill our life with. But just like Alice, we're not sure where we're going, but we're just continuing to walk. Today's message is great for the planners of life and for the great wanderers of life alike. Some of us, maybe in this room, are great planners. Some of us, other, other of us, might be great wanderers. And this is a message for both. So if you're a planner or an enterpriser, listen up today. If you are a wanderer or a daydreamer, listen up. And let's look to the scripture together. If you have your copy of God's word, we're going to be in James 
chapter 4, starting verse 13. If you don't have one with you today, that's okay. We're going to have it up on the screen. But James chapter 4, verse 13, we've been in a series through the book of James that we've crossed the halfway point. We're kind of at the end of the book now. And I want to examine this very important passage together. So if you found James chapter 4, if I could get you to stand up again in honor of the reading of God's word together. We're going to read it once together and then we're going to, I hope you keep that Bible open because we keep referring to it and keep looking at it. I don't have anything clever to say to you. I'm not clever enough. Uh, to preach anything but the Bible, and I'm too smart to preach anything except the Bible. And so here I am, James chapter 4, starting in verse 13. It says, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will travel to such and such a city, spend a year there, do business, and make a profit. But listen what he says to these guys. He says, Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. You don't know what your life will be. For you are like a vapor, say vapor, that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you should say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil, so it is sin to know the good and yet not do it. Let's dissect that. What does that mean? Let's pray together first. Father, we need your help. Send your spirit, O Lord, in our presence. Help us to illuminate this passage of the Bible so that we can learn it together, so we can understand it. Father, move our hearts to feel what you are saying. Move, illuminate our, our brains to understand what you're saying. Illuminate our, our, our hands and our feet to act out what you are saying in obedience to you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and take a seat. I titled this message, Life Like a Vapor. Life Like a Vapor. Uh, many of us think that our life is a story that we get to write. We talked about that in our small group just a second ago. But our life is really, James describes it as a vapor because it's not our story. We're here for a little while and then we're gone. Really, all of history is his story. It's God's story that we get to be a part in. Last week, we had this call to repentance. And James is funny in how he kind of moves from section to section, from topic to topic. But he calls upon this important point that Christians live their life under the Lord's will. Our roadmap today is we're going to look at three reasons why we live for God's will instead of our own. Let's look at it together. Look at verse 14. James gives this example that traveling merchants might have said in his time. And, and surely business people and merchants and these sort of guys would say in our time to do is today. He says, today or tomorrow we'll travel to such and such city. I like how that translates there because that's what that's conveying to this city or that city, whatever. It doesn't matter. And we'll do business. We'll make a profit. But James cuts down their plan. Did you see it? He says, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring, what your life will be. You're like a vapor that appears for a little while then vanishes. I repeat to you for sake of clarity of where we're going. What's the issue here, by the way? Is the issue that it's wrong for them to make plans? Is God saying we shouldn't? Make plans? Is God saying that we shouldn't be in business? Is God saying that it's a sin to make a profit? But it's not an issue of occupation, but an issue of attitude is what's in view here. It's a matter of control and a worldview. The question is, are you at the center of your universe or is God at the center of your universe? We think that we're in the driver's seat when in reality, if we could see things, things like God sees things, we're lucky that we're even in the car. You don't know what will happen tomorrow or what your life will be, he says. And so, number one, we need to live for God's will because life is uncertain. Life is uncertain. When you go camping, there's an old cliche by the campfire. I think you've probably heard it. Smoke follows beauty, right? And that's, um, I'm not sure if that's true. I don't think that's true. It's something we make ourselves feel better uh, when the campfire is just belching smoke into our face, making our, our eyes water like a water hose, and it's just horrible. It's making all of our, our skin dry and our hair frizzle, some of us, and it's not really good. But you and I both know that smoke doesn't really have a mind to do that. It doesn't have a mind of its own. It doesn't have a will. In fact, smoke is not in control of its existence at all, is it? Think about that. Think about smoke together today. Smoke is there because of some, someone else or something else. Acting upon it, right? Something's on fire. It's creating that smoke. 
It moves and is shaped by forces like the wind acting upon it. It doesn't have a will of its own. And it dissipates. It, it ceases out of existence, not by its own choice, but because of its own nature. It's acted upon by forces outside of itself. And how much of your life do you really control today? Or how much would you agree with James that, that our life is like a vapor? It's like a smoke or a mist. That God alone is sovereign. God alone is in control of life. Job said of God, he said, I know that you can do all things and no purpose of yours can be thwarted. 42 verse 1. The king Nebuchadnezzar, he said, all the people of the earth are regarded as nothing. He, that's God, does as he pleases with the powers of heaven and the people of the earth. No one can hold back his hand or say to him, what have you done? This is who God is. That's a revelation of who God is and how he works within history. Even when, but even we who name the name of the Lord, because sometimes we live as practical atheists sometimes, living oblivious to God's power and plan and rule over creation. We often get to a place where we live as if God isn't even there. We don't regard him in our, our actions and our duties and our, our everyday life. And so we, we have this tendency or this temptation to be arrogant in our plans and commanding our life apart from the will of God. But I tell you today that your life is far too uncertain for you to do that. You're not really in control like you believe that you are. I hate to break it to you. Plans are good. Business is good. Travel is good. Profit is fine. But it is God who allows us to have our lives and our being. It's God alone who has that right. Look at verse 14. He, he's comparing life again to vapor and smoke and mist. That it's not here for long. If I, if I had a match today, I don't carry matches around. There's no real reason for me to do that. I like Zippo lighters. You know, you'll see the Zippo lighters whenever you're checking out at Walmart. And I say to myself, that is, a, that is nice, right? But I have no reason to have a Zippo lighter. I have no reason to carry that around in my pocket, right? If I'd be, I'll, I'll do you one better. Sarah and I were celebrating our anniversary this weekend, right? And we went to Dave and Buster's. You guys know Dave and Buster's, right? No? <laughs> no? Okay. And then you get tickets, and then you go and exchange your tickets. And they had Dave and Buster's flasks, right? Flasks. And I said, that is the neatest thing. But what soda am I going to put in that thing? <laughs> I have no need for it. Some of y'all are going to see me after church. Where was that? That's okay. But I have no use for these things. But if I had a match today, and I lit the match, and I would say, how long is the smoke going to last from this match. You see the smoke rising up, up into our nice vaulted ceiling here at First Baptist. I, I could ask you, how long is the smoke going to last? I could make you, maybe have you guys write down a number, a guess, of how many seconds the smoke would last. Some of y'all would be right in your guess. Most of us would be wrong, but there would be one thing in common with all of our guesses. None of us would guess very long, right? That smoke is not there for very long. In fact, once that fire is out or burns my hand and I drop it, under our nice carpet here at First Baptist of Great Summit. That smoke will not last very long. If our life is like that, then we need to make use of the time that we have. Number two, we need to live for God's will because life is short. Life is short. There was a guy by the name of William Henry Harrison, and he was our ninth president of these United States. He was elected in 1841, and uh, being an older man and, and defeating his opponent in the election, he was quite proud of his accomplishment of becoming president. And he stood and gave a two-hour-long inaugural address, the longest inaugural address in our nation's history. It was a remarkably cold and rainy day, and he delivered his address completely from beginning to end without a coat and without a hat. But being the oldest man until Ronald Reagan, at that point he was the oldest man ever elected president, uh, he wanted to show his opposition that he was up to the task, up to the rigors of the presidency. But after his inaugural address, he fell ill and died 31 days later. The shortest presidency in our nation's history. What's my point? You do not know what tomorrow will bring. Despite our plans, despite our boasts, despite our desires, you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What has the last two years taught us? That life could possibly, for, for some of us more than others, be brought short by complications from a virus like COVID. That it, at the very least, could be made complicated and disrupted by government mandates and regulations. 
that our life can be disturbed by riots in our nation and war outside of our nation. Y'all liking those gas prices, by the way? I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I'm glad that you drove here. My, my buddy had a plan. We were going to go see something. I'll just leave it at that. We were going to see a show, right, of a, of a famous musician. And the tickets are astronomical, and that was about to stop me right there. I'm not going to pay that, right? But then I told him, buddy, you were wondering if I was going to go see the show. Now I'm wondering if I can get gas to see the show. It, it, it's unreal, right? And it will maybe likely get worse. And at any moment, the return of Christ could change and disrupt your life forever. And so James' older brother, a guy you might have heard of, his name was Jesus, he told a similar story in Luke chapter 12, verse 16 through 20. He told about a rich man who set himself to building more and more wealth and bigger and bigger barns. And in verse 19, he says, And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. I love that. I love that he literally said, Soul, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? He was worried about his plans and treasures and leisure, but he wasn't worried about becoming rich towards God. And so I say to you today, your life and my life is a question of control. Who is in control? Are you or is God? Only God sees through the uncertainty of life and knows the number of your days. Psalm 139, 16 says, Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them. The days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. None of us could guess how long we will live, how long we have left, what our lives and our days are going to be. But God knows every single one of them, the days that are prepared for you from beginning to end. And because life is so short and God only knows, that's why Moses writes in Psalm 90, 12, the psalm that is attributed to Moses. He says, teach us to number our days. So that we may get a heart of wisdom. Did you catch that? In order to get a heart of wisdom, in order to have a heart that beats for what is wise to God, one of the ways that we do that is to be able to know that your life on earth is not forever. That there is a number to each one of our days. That's why the old poem writes, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. I ask you today, how are you going to spend it? There is a number to your days. There's a number to my days. And if God would teach us to number our days, to put a number to it, that I, that I am not like I was when I was 18 and believed that I was going to live forever no matter what I did, no matter how fast I drove in my car, nothing could ever hurt me and I was going to live forever. If, he, if, if God could, could impress upon us to put a number to our days, he could give us a heart of wisdom. I ask you, don't waste your life. But give your days, your months, your years to Christ the Lord, to whom it belongs in the first place. Don't waste your life. But look at verse 15. He says, instead, you should say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. But as it is, he says, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. You know, that phrase, if the Lord wills, is the key to our whole time here together. If the Lord wills. It's God Almighty who sustains the world, controls our future. All of our decisions, big and small, are in submission to God's will. It's why we qualify all of our life's plans behind this mighty umbrella. If the Lord wills, if the Lord will allow it, this is what I will do. I will submit myself to him. Because we can get this pride about us and our confidence, throwing around plans as if we take the center stage of life. I ask you today, who is the main character of the story of your lives? If Jesus isn't the hero and the main character, we haven't understood yet what it means to declare him as Lord. He is the hero. And so here's the principle number three. We need to follow God's will because life is the Lord's. It belongs to him. He's the one who decides what we do and don't do. He's the one whose will should be preeminent in our lives. There's, this is a story from long ago. Even though it deals with this area of the world, it has nothing to do with current events. But the Russian branch of Domino's Pizza had this, uh, had this offer. They offered a lifetime of pizza to anyone who would, who would tattoo the Domino's logo upon their body. They didn't expect anyone to take them up on it. 
and were smiling already because they were terribly, desperately wrong. They had to withdraw the promotion. In fact, there was too many people tattooing the Domino's logo upon them, and they were on the hook already for an awful <coughs> amount of pizza. I'm a fan of Domino's pizza. Mm. I might take you up on that. <laughs> if you catch me on the wrong day, Margaret, you may find me with a Domino's pizza tattoo. <laughs> This isn't a, saying anything about tattoos in and of themselves, but there is a question of identity there, isn't there? Who does your life and your body belong to? Would you want to become a, a permanent billboard for some company that might be here today and gone tomorrow? Who does your life and your body belong to? Or would God bring you to such a point that you would say, my life is not my own. It's God who is the master of my life and determines my success. I want to make a point here. Paul and his other guys there in the book of Acts, other associates, they were pretty good at this, what we just said. They would say, if the Lord wills concerning their missionary plans. But they didn't say it every single time. And here's an important point, because we are not going to print, if the Lord wills, on every one of our announcements, right? I'm not going to tell Christina when she comes and does announcement, say, if the Lord wills, before and after every single announcement, because the point is not some sort of formula that we need to verbalize that becomes legalistic and meaningless, but it's about having this idea in our mind every moment that it's the Lord's will. This is a heart problem, not a, not a word problem. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? It's the Lord's will in our hearts that should be preeminent every single Day. We should wake up and say, Lord, I submit myself to your will. Do something incredible through me today that might not be what I have in mind. What if, what if we said that? What if we said, Lord, I, I, have, I have things on a calendar this week, this day, this month. We, will you, I, I give them to you. I lay them at your feet. Would you do something great for your kingdom today? Would you do something great for your kingdom this week? You know, I'm just going on a rant here. When we come to church, we should not say, I'm going to sing four songs. I'm going to hear what Brother Tommy has to say. I'm going to listen to the announcements. I'm going to meet and greet with the folks I need to meet and greet. And I need to go home then and eat Taco Bell or maybe Domino's Pizza, right? We have this joke. This is real quick. I'll get to the point. We have this joke every time. Every day after church, <laughs> we'll get in the car after church, and Benny will say, you know, Domino's Pizza right about now are thinking, where's the Schmidt family? Where's their call? Right? They're counting on us, Dad. No, we're going we're gonna to go out. And I'm like, man, you're hurting Domino's feelings right now. They're counting on us. We're, we're keeping Domino's and Pacific alive right now. But here's the point. What if we said, even in church, what if we said, God, don't let me do something rubbed. God, don't let, don't let me do something just because I ought to or just because my parents told me to do that. Now they've passed on and now I'm living kind of their faith through me. But what if I said, what if, what if, what if we said collectively, God, do something amazing through this gathering of people together. And then send us out to our mission field. Do something amazing through us this week. We have plans. We have ideas. We have stuff on a calendar. But God, open doors where I will tell the gospel to people who are far from God. Help me to be a hope dealer to this community full of other sorts of dealers. Lord, help, help me to do something incredible this week. Help me to attempt great things from God, as the missionary said, and expect great things from God. Lord, have your will in my life. James makes this point. He says, so it is sin to know the good and yet not to do it. You wonder why he said that. He said, what, what was, did that have anything to do with what we just said? Well, it has this much to do. James has now told us what to do. And if we understand it today, it's a sin not to go through with it. It's a sin not to obey it. Our life is measured not just by good things that we do, but what, what we fail to do. Those sins of omission, we call them, that are the things we overlook, that are the things God's really leading us to do. What if we asked ourselves, instead of just saying, God, I'm sorry for these things I did wrong, we ask, God, would you reveal those things I'm just neglecting? I'm just neglecting. Would you open my eyes to the many opportunities 
to shape and change the world around me, to be a blessing, to be an ambassador of your grace and your love, to be the hands and feet of Jesus that I am just overlooking every day. I, I mean, what if we ask that? The sense of commission, those things we failed to do that were right, when we failed to acknowledge God's will in our lives and his direction, we sin, and, and we're no better than Alice in Wonderland, stuck at a fork in the road, not sure where to go. Life is so uncertain, it's too uncertain not to put your trust in the solid rock of Jesus Christ. Life is far too short for you not to claim eternal life in his name alone. And your life was given to you by him, so it rightly belongs to him. Listen, your life is like a vapor. I'm here to tell you a hard truth. Your life is like a vapor. It is uncertain, it's blown around by things that you'll never control. You didn't control what family that you were born in. You didn't control your circumstances. You didn't control the neighbors you were placed with. You didn't control the churches that were around you and available to you. And your life is short. It will be here today. It'll be gone tomorrow. From God's point of view that sees the beginning from the end, your life is a tiny, tiny speck. Your life may be short and uncertain, but that doesn't mean it's unvaluable, though. That doesn't mean it's not valuable. Because God puts you here today for a reason. In all of the vast expanse of eternity, God placed a vapor. God placed a mist. God placed a, a, a blip on the radar, called you and called me. God has it for a reason. He created you in his own image, an image bearer who would dream dreams and, and love and experience and think and, and, and have all of the, the, the experience of, experiences of life. It wasn't so that you could be the hero of your own story. though. It wasn't that you could be the captain of your own ship and find your truth and preach your truth and find your own way. No. All of the world will tell you that. Was it, go find your voice and go find your truth and go find your experience and go live what makes you feel good. No, but to be a valuable part of God's rich and beautiful story. He's writing all of his story and you are a part of it. I'm a part of it. He put a vapor in the expanse of eternity called Tommy Schmidt and he has a calling upon my life to go and to do his will every day of my life. I, my job is to submit to him as Lord, to bow the knee and say, God, not my will, but yours be done. I wonder if all of us would say that together. It's not my will, but yours be done. I wonder if you would say in your own life, if you would recognize today that in the vast expanse of eternity, he put a vapor there. He, he called it you. And he has a calling upon your life as well. That's not just for deacons. That's not just for pastors. That's not just for evangelists and missionaries. He put a calling upon your life. He calls you his own child of God today. If you know him as Lord, he calls you a son or a daughter. And he has a purpose for your life. It's short. It's uncertain. But it's not pointless. And you don't have to meander around with no direction. He has given you a direction to go. He's given you a great commission. And so I wonder today if you would lean into that. Lean into that purpose. And you would say, God, have your will done in my life. Or maybe today you're here or you're listening online and, and you don't know Jesus says, Lord, and you are wandering in life. You are a wanderer, a daydreamer. You are directionless in life. Well, God has a call upon your life today too is to repent of your sins and turn to him as Lord. Would you put faith in him because he died upon a cross for your sins, to pay your sin debt. He was buried. He rose again from the grave three, day, three days later. He ascended to the Father. He makes intercession for us. He's coming back to make all things new. And so I wonder today, you that are here physically, you that are on camera, there on the other side of the internet expanse, if you today would declare Jesus as Lord, give me direction. Let me live not for my own will, but for yours today. And let your glory be known in my life. Would you stand with me? Maybe God would have you to respond to that thought. And I'm going to lead us now in a time of response. 
And maybe it's as simple as you making altar right where you are, to, to bow your head right where you are and say, Jesus, have your will in my life. I, I have come to a point maybe where I begin to look internally for all the answers. And I begin to live for myself again. And I begin to buy into the lie of the world that I have my truth and my uh, destiny that I have to figure out because I'm the captain of this ship. And maybe today you would bow your head in this time of response and just say, God, have your will. I repent of my self-rule. Would you have dominion so that I can do something far greater in your name than I can do in myself? Maybe it's as simple as that today. Or maybe in a, in a symbol of that response, you would walk an aisle and come and, and, and pray at an altar like this. You would bow and you would grab a friend and you would pray, God, would your will be done in my life? Because what's important today is not that my will gets done at First Baptist Church or Grace Summit. If somebody's will gets done, it's that God's will is done in our midst. We won't take the hill. We won't change the city unless God has dominion right here in our midst. So would you respond to that today? Would you let the Holy Spirit teach you what he's saying to you today? Father, we thank you for this day. We love you. And Father, now is a call to surrender. I know, Lord, our, our life is stubborn. We, we would love to commandeer our life, Lord. We love to live in rebellion to you. But, Lord, you're calling us out of that so that you can call us into true freedom by following your will. You know what is best for our life. Lord, you don't, you don't call us into darkness and confusion. You are not a God of chaos, but of order. You're calling us into true life, everlasting life, Lord. A, a life of meaning and purpose and direction. Thank Lord, that, that in all of eternity, you caused a vapor to appear that is represented in these folks that are here and watching online. We thank you, Lord, that you did that. We pray that each and every one of us, that you have a purpose for us, not for us to live for ourselves, but to say, I, my, I am body and soul belonging to the Lord. I will live my life to glorify him and enjoy him forever. Oh, Father, help us to lean into that. Lord, if there's someone who needs to respond to that today, would you lead them by your spirit to do that just today? Father, let you be glorified in it as we surrender our day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing together. <laughs> Sunday the 20th, 
uh, after church as a, as a um, touch base on the April mission project. And then we're having game day at 4 o'clock. Big, strong, husky guys are coming early to haul chairs. And, uh, and then we're going to have game day. We're going to have board games and all kinds of fun stuff like that. It'll be a good time. The Sunday after that, um, right after service, is a little small luncheon to discuss some children's programs for First Baptist Church of Grace. So it's just a brainstorm, nothing set in stone as of now, but want to gather interest, support, um, ask questions, kind of gather info. So that's what we're going to do there. Am I missing something? I'm missing anything. All right, let's pray, and then Sarah's going to sing us out here. Father, we thank you again for this day. We love you. And Lord, help us to remember today. Help us to have in our mind, Father, that our life is not our own. So we belong body and soul in life and in death to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father, help us to remember our days today. Help us to have a heart of wisdom, knowing that we won't be here in this flesh and blood tonight. Father, you have prepared a place for us for where you go, we will go as well. Father, help us to live our life, not wasting time with our selfish plans and selfish schemes. But Father, help us to surrender to your will today. And help us, Lord, to bring glory upon you and to magnify you.